Hey, and welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Caleb Kinchlow. Bigger, better, and slower. This is what NASA is aiming for with its new hypersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator project, known as HIAD. Basically, a HIAD is an inflatable heat shield which could allow spacecraft to safely enter into and descend through an atmosphere. It's bigger because it's inflatable, so it can get packed into a smaller space and ultimately inflate to a much larger size. And that means a HIAD can carry a much larger payload. And it's slower because the larger the heat shield, the more friction it creates to slow the vehicle down at a faster rate, even in a thinner atmosphere. But better? It's better because this technology could take us to places in our solar system that we've only ever dreamed of. HIAD may actually change the way that we explore other worlds. Wouldn't it be cool to get an up close and personal look at the methane lakes on Titan's surface? How awesome would it be to study brand new parts of Mars, parts where water may have actually flowed, or one day send humans to the red planet. So what will it take to get us there? Well, NASA engineers are developing thermal protection systems to protect the inflatable and its payload from the intense heat created by entry. And those engineers have been working on inflatable structures that use their unique shape and size to create a larger surface area, allowing the heat to distribute over the entire surface, lowering the temperature while slowing it down. Sounds like they've got it all under control. Well, not quite. A Hyatt vehicle isn't ready to fly a mission to Mars or anywhere else just yet. It's still in the research and development phase. Researchers and engineers have been busy performing tests and analysis on multiple fronts for Hyatt. Once all the individual components and subsystems pass their tests, the technology is ready for the next step, suborbital flight tests. So what good is all this testing? What's the end goal? So one of the end goals of a HIAD would be to be used on a future recovery or science or exploration mission that may be robotic, that may be crewed, that's a possibility for the future. But before we can get there, we have to do a lot of testing before this technology is ready to be used on any one of those missions. Ground testing and flight testing are important for us as engineers to understand the ins and outs of everything about the system, all the materials, all the components. Well, right now, some of the sounding rocket tests are at the three meter diameter, and we have some wind tunnel tests that are at six meter and eight meter diameter for the HIADs. So when we're looking at design solutions, we're also thinking about long term. And long term, we would like to have even larger scale HIADs. So the engineers worked their designs on paper, then built small versions that could be tested. Subsequent tests involved larger HIADs until the engineers have the data they need to build a HIAD perfect for a specific task. But that doesn't mean no one's thought about a fully developed HIAD and how it might perform, or just what a full-size HIAD might allow us to do. In the future, we'd like to have HIADs that go larger scale and then 25 meter diameter range. So right now, we're working on a concept called HART, the High Energy Atmospheric Reentry Test. So in order to meet that goal, there's a number of things that the HIAD team is, is working on. One of them is the flexible thermal protection system and the materials that are used for it. Another one is the materials used on the inflatable structure and how the manufacturing process can be improved. And along with the both of those is the instrumentation that goes on them so that we can collect performance and survivability data in flight. And then also with a lot of other um, engineering disciplines, there's already standards and codes in place to help us analyze and predict what we're going to see in flight. And since this is a new technology, we're having to look at different ways and methods for how to be more efficient about that and how to accurately predict. So all the ground testing and the flight testing combined together is what helps us ultimately hopefully get to that goal of a larger scale HIAD in the future. The research that engineers are doing today leads us to the technology of tomorrow. And the technology of tomorrow can help us answer questions scientists have about our solar system. So where are some of the places this new HIAD technology could eventually take us? HIADs open the possibilities to go explore all kinds of different places in our solar system. So the solar system is moving very fast and a lot of um, locations or destinations have atmospheres that HIADs would allow us to slow down and actually stop and take a look and explore those places and learn from the science that's there to help us better understand our solar system and ultimately help us understand our Earth here too. 
But don't forget the component about being able to return to Earth. There's a lot of different applications there. We could either bring back resources from the International Space Station or maybe resources from objects orbiting uh, near the Earth, such as asteroids, or possibly even recovery of systems that are used on launches, so booster recovery, for example. There's probably other capabilities that we haven't even thought of yet, so you know, keep an open mind about the different possibilities of where a HIAD could be used. Scientific inquiry drives engineering and new technologies developed by engineers result in new scientific questions just waiting to be answered. And with NASA engineers working on HIAD, we may get the answers to those questions at hypersonic speed. That's it for now. I'm Caleb. Catch you next time on NASA Launchpad.